Whenever I'm walking a field, I like to have my tile spade with me, not because I'm gonna do tiling necessarily, but because I like to stick it in the ground and just see how firm that soil is. And when I get into parts of the field where I can only stick the shovel in just a few inches, maybe two to four inches, we've got a big time problem with compaction there that needs to be addressed. Yeah, the, the whole thing with compaction though is a lot of farmers will say, oh, you know, I got a little bit of compaction, but it's no big deal. Most of us just don't realize how bad the compaction problem is. That's why on our farm we like to dig root pits. When we go out and dig root pits, you can see exactly where root growth is. We suggest digging root pits, especially at this time of the year right now, because the roots on most crops have been fully developed. And for that matter, uh, maybe they're more than fully developed. Like with corn, it reaches maximum root size at about tasseling time. But anyway, the point is you can see where all your roots are at. So if you had major compaction issues, you'll have most of your corn roots or any crops roots in the top few inches of soil rather than reaching down where they need to be down a foot, two feet, three feet in the ground. There's a lot of different things with compaction. It, it can be an issue when you're too dry. It can also be an issue when you're too wet. When you've got lots of moisture, in fact, excessive moisture, you need that water to move down through the soil to get rid of it. You don't want it just washing off and, and eroding the topsoil. You want it to move down through. If you've got a compaction layer, that water cannot get through. Yeah, but the thing is, when you have moisture, then it's a little misleading. You don't think you have as bad a compaction problem because you still have a pretty good crop. Even if, let's put it this way, even if all your roots are in the top four inches of soil, if you have decent moisture all season long, your crop well, still you, turns out You okay. can ram a penetrometer through yes, it, but you're still going to see that layer well, show up to some degree. To some degree, but if that soil is wet, your roots are more likely to penetrate through well, the compaction I'll, I'll layer. I'll agree with you, not. and I've got a good example of that. I was in western New York a few weeks ago, and they've had excessive moisture through the growing season there. And actually, in root pits, you could see it where there was zone building. Farmers who had done some zone building, they said, man, the roots went right down, the moisture went down, it was fantastic for us, it really stood out in the field. But where we hadn't run zone builders out there, we had that compaction layer, and the roots eventually did kind of wiggle their way through it, but it took them a lot longer, the crop suffered, and yes, it did hold back some moisture. There's no question about okay. it. Okay, you mentioned zone building. Why don't you talk about the specifics of that? Uh, in how to remedy compaction, at least in the short term. Okay, well there's a couple different ways that you can, can take care of compaction. Now, one of them would be using a zone builder. That's our preferred method on our farm. What we're talking about with a zone builder is using a straight shank in our farm, 30 inch spacings, and that shank's just a couple inches wide at the bottom at the tip. So it's not this big wide shank. We aren't trying to turn over a lot of soil. We're just trying to slice through that compaction layer, basically leaving the top soil for the most part undisturbed, but we're slicing slots down through that compacted layer. So roots will find those slots and also moisture will find those slots and move on down, getting us down below that compaction layer where we can access water and nutrients well, the, the and whole get away with excess, or get, away, get rid of excess moisture. Too. The whole thing is we typically have two compaction layers on most farms across the entire country. Just about every field Darren and I have ever been in. Well, not just we this find country, a, well, other countries yeah. as well. But we find a compaction layer at the plow pan, say eight inches deep or maybe 10 inches deep, however deep you've done tillage, and then a natural compaction layer, a lot of times down at 16 to 20 inches deep. With this zone builder, we're running down about 20 to 22 inches deep. So we can not only get below the first compaction layer, but also below the second. So right away, you'll say, okay, I'm, in, I'm getting a lot more roots down there. Do I always have more yield because I have more roots down deep in the ground? Well, not necessarily, no. Uh, more roots is good. If you ask uh, 100 farmers, well, would you rather have more roots or less? I think you're gonna get probably 98 or 99 responses of, yes, I'll take more roots every time, but you've gotta have some nutrition down there to feed them as well. So just because you have bigger roots, if your fertility program isn't there to support that better plant, you aren't necessarily going to have better In roots. other words, in the short term, you're better off if when you're zone building, you can put some fertility down with it. We've had the very best results by putting liquid manure down into that slot. And literally in about five or six years, we have dark slots going down. In other words, we have created new soil. And that's kind of fun to do. So over a long period of time, you're gonna get more roots down there. As those roots break down and decay, you're gonna create new soil. You're going to leave nutrients for future crops. It's a good long-term thing. But in the short term, what our point is, is you're not gonna gain a whole lot of yield in the short term unless you have nutrients down there to go along with the water that's already there. Now I mentioned there were a couple different ways to deal with compaction. We like the deep zone building with the straight shanks. Some people like to plow or to deep rip. 
Well, that, even, that is a even short like term right, fix as well. Even like right behind us, we've got a chisel plow and we have used that trying to run it as deep as we possibly can to get below the first compaction layer. With pretty much any other tillage tool other than a zone builder, you're going to deal with that top layer of compaction, which is better than doing nothing. But in the end, let's say that you're tilling now at 12 inches with a chisel plow or a V-ripper or what, whatever you want to use, you're eventually going to see that compaction build up at that 12 inch level now rather than at the 6 or 8 inch level that it once was. So by doing that tillage where you're turning everything over, you're eventually going to create compaction again. So it's a shorter term fix than using something like a zone builder. Well, once again, compaction is a major issue on farms all over the country. We suggest that you look hard on your farm, dig some root pits, see what you've got for issues on your farm. But if yours is like our farm, I think you'll find that using a zone builder out there will help you alleviate both short-term and long-term issues with compaction on your farm. I know Brian's a fan of the zone builder. Unfortunately, it doesn't work to control the weed of the week on his farm. We'll show you what will coming up later in the show.